Lithuania. Imagine walking cobblestone streets of medieval Vilnius, up the hill of witches, and along barren beaches of the Baltic Sea. I specifically came on this trip because I didn't know a lot about the Baltic states. The story of the Baltics is best learned at ground level, in the midst of its people. It's just enough uh, balance between what the usual tourist sees and the surprises. After countless wars, occupations, and even a singing revolution, these countries have re-emerged to reveal their splendor to the world. It's a real variety of sad things, happy things, but most of important, real things. Something very important we can see here also because this landscape, what we see around, it's not typical for this area, it's not typical for the whole country. You know how we call our landscape, that looking through the window, you can see who is coming to visit you tomorrow. <laughs> In a landscape unique to Lithuania, the Hill of Witches contains 80 wooden sculptures along a series of trails. In Lithuania we have so many fairy tales that not all of them they are written in the books. So most of them, they are told just from one person to another. This is what mothers they are doing for children before going to bed. Normally they do not read the book, they tell one of Lithuanian fairy tales. Oh yeah, I think the stories really make the, the walk meaningful. The sculptures depict characters from Lithuanian folklore and pagan traditions. So we have two, kind, uh, two types of witches, and not all of them are bad. Devils, we are not bad at all in our mythology. But very nice story. You shouldn't play with them. You are going to win. All those. Uh, so, about the reef. What is the meaning? In pagan religion, as Lithuania kept pagan traditions for a very long time, they put into the reef all their thoughts, all their wishes for the next year. But in the evening, they are throwing reefs to the water. And if two reefs are coming close together, for the boy and for the girl, you were chosen to be a couple and you can stay <laughs> together. <laughs> People from the United States, they are coming to learn what kind of countries we are, what kind of people live there, and we are extremely happy about that. So thank you very much for coming here to our place and visiting our family. So we do not have so many in our village, so this is why I'm so happy that finally my dream came true. And I have all of you coming and visiting the place. Probably lunch was the most fascinating. Uh, we had the local fish and a woman who entertained us with song. Uh, that was that was a lot of fun. So we have the singing, the singing restaurant tour today. Really, really a kick. <laughs> A lot of character. <laughs> a lot of character. She had as much fun as we're having. And she thoroughly enjoyed what she was doing. She enjoyed having us. And that always makes it kind of fun. Today, I think we're going to see the most beautiful part of the trip on the coast. Formed by the waves and winds of the Baltic Sea, the spit is shared by Lithuania and Russia. I'll just be enjoying the fresh air and the water. Its constantly drifting sand dunes are also a beachcomber's delight. We're looking here for amber. Lithuanian people everywhere, they walk at the seaside just looking down. They are always optimistic to find some amber. For thousands of years, high-quality amber 
torn from the bottom of the Baltic by fierce tides and storms, have been deposited along this tiny sliver of beach. Do you see a tiny, tiny piece of pepper? So, you have your treasure. I've always had good guides on OAT, but Vita is one of the, the very best. Whatever someone is interested in, uh, she will adapt and find a way for us to see that and learn about it. I'd like to take Vita back home with me. <laughs> she's great, yes, I think we all think she's great. You lost it. I lost it. Did you see where it went? <laughs> This is why, why we can find it again and again, because people, they keep losing that. At one time, the collection of amber was a risky business, closely monitored by the government under draconian amber laws. Each coastal village along the Baltic had its own gallows for amber thieves. Here we are, in the amber gallery. We have a blue amber, what I'm wearing today. It's also blue amber, also very rare color. So I give you the taste. Actually, how does it taste? So, salute. <laughs> a little bit and give for another one. <laughs> and for the size. We're polishing okay. amber to get the bark of it off. People coming here, they, they believe that amber this is only yellow and suddenly they find that amber can be black, amber can be white, it can be transparent or not transparent. This is one more of the surprises or learnings that we call that here. The people of Lithuania and the Baltics have, against great adversity and foreign occupation, kept their culture and religious beliefs intact. So this is where we have the tent, and this is what people, they are not supposed to cross and go to Russia. Recent independence of these countries has allowed them to open their borders, both to one another and also to the outside world.